His Kind of Woman is a 1951 film noir slash comedy starring Robert Mitchum and Jane Russell, written by Jack Leonard and Frank Fenton, and was directed by John Farrow. In the film, Mitchum plays a gambler named Dan Milner, who is broke and desperate. Seemingly coming to the rescue are some men who offer him $50,000 to travel to a Mexican resort and await further instructions. Once he arrives, he begins trying to figure out just what he's doing there. The truth could be deadly. His Kind of Woman has a story that I've always found very intriguing, both on screen and off, but for now let's talk about the plot of the movie. I love stories where the hero is kept in the dark, and whether the audience knows more than the hero or not, it's always fun watching someone try to investigate a mystery when they have no idea what they're trying to discover. In this case, we the audience do have more information than Robert Mitchum's character, but not necessarily the whole story, courtesy of some early scenes where we meet the villain of the film. But just watching this man go up to random people at this resort and strike up conversations, hoping that one of them will know his name or give some clue that they're in on this scheme, whatever it is, is really intriguing. I call this movie a film noir slash comedy, and it's almost divided into two sections like that, with the first three quarters of the movie being more typical noir, and the last act falling into broad comedy, some of the time. Tonally, this movie is a little uneven, maybe more than a little. There is humor sprinkled throughout, but most of it early on comes from the script, and I love the dialogue and all the banter that we get, so even if a scene isn't intended to be outright hilarious, there are still fun moments and lines that get a laugh because of a unique turn of phrase. And that brings me to Robert Mitchum. I'm a huge Robert Mitchum fan, and I think he could excel in any genre he turned up in. But during the 40s and 50s, he made a fair number of film noirs, such as Out of the Past, The Big Steel, The Racket, and he was so suited to them, in large part because of the way he could deliver the dialogue. Film noir dialogue is obviously heavily stylized, and characters speak in ways that people in real life never do. And with a lesser actor, the lines can come off as overwritten or maybe too cool, but you never get that with Mitchum. He tosses off these lines almost carelessly, and doesn't take it too seriously. The way he speaks makes you believe he's coming up with these far too clever retorts on the spot. And I love it. He's excellent throughout this movie, and brings his effortless charisma in every scene. You see it in the way he just swaggers through the resort, and how he can go from roughing up a suspicious character to trading barbs with his leading lady with ease. But even though he treats every situation as if he doesn't care, he still brings his considerable acting talent. Take for instance the scene with Jane Russell in the doorway of his bungalow late in the movie. He's still delivering his lines as he always does, but with each one, it's as if he's pleading with her to leave before the thugs waiting inside decide to hurt her too. So it adds this extra layer on top of his normal persona, where he's a good guy trying to protect her. Speaking of Jane Russell, I think she did a phenomenal job in the role of Lenore Brent, a down-on-her-luck singer who's in Mexico hoping to find a rich man to rescue her from the brink of poverty. She's basically the female equivalent to Robert Mitchum's character, and also can play scenes like these with so much charm. Their exchanges are almost like tennis matches, both unleashing plenty of fun remarks going back and forth, but notably, and thankfully I would say, they didn't go the easy route of filling their scenes with innuendo. It's just well-written dialogue that doesn't need to get sleazy. Jane Russell and Robert Mitchum were teamed again the following year for Macau, another noir adventure like this, I've seen it as well, and they once again had great chemistry. I believe the two of them were lifelong friends offset, and it shows. Vincent Price stars as Mark Cardigan, a vain movie star who is on an extended vacation at the resort where all the action takes place. He's fantastic in his role, playing this gun enthusiast and hunter who will take any opportunity to express how gifted he is at anything he does. Speaking of hunting, by the way, he is the quarry that Jane Russell's character is after. He pops up off and on during the opening acts before his character takes center stage for the finale. We will talk about that towards the end of the review. Earlier, he is a lot of fun, especially during moments like the scene where he screens his latest movie for his fellow guests. He's obviously supposed to be an Errol Flynn type during those scenes, and his careful watching for audience reactions was perfect. Tim Holt has a small role as a federal immigration officer of some kind, who shows up to enlighten Mitchum about what's going on. He's very good in this rare role outside the Western genre, but again, it's just so small. I wish he would have had more to do, and he may have in the original cut, 
we'll never know, but it was great to see him. Jim Backus is doing his usual thing, playing a rich man, not unlike his character from Gilligan's Island, although with a bit more of a devious side here. Charles McGraw is always good in these types of thug roles, and he is again. I know actors then and now don't like being typecast, but he fit these sorts of parts to a T, with his gravelly voice and stern look. Anthony Caruso turns up later in the movie as another henchman and is dependable as ever. And finally, Raymond Burr plays the movie's villain, a gangster named Nick Ferrero. This was only a few short years before he began his iconic role as Perry Mason, but this was still the period where he was playing lots of bad guys like this. It's so interesting comparing Perry Mason to all these sadistic lunatics, Rear Window being probably the most famous example, but Raymond Burr does a great job. He's intense and nearly unhinged in the last act, and he's very convincing. One thing I enjoy is that even if this is a crime film, and these types were known for more cynical attitudes, is that all three of our main protagonists exhibit good traits and departures from their more self-serving tendencies they showed earlier. Robert Mitchum uses his skills in the movie to get back some money that a not-so-well-off honeymooning couple has lost, and really tries to befriend the wife and protect her when her husband is making pretty bad choices. He doesn't do it for any benefit to himself, not to get close to the wife, he just does it because he wants to help. Jane Russell tries to help Mitchum later when she learns he's in trouble, even though it would serve her better to stay out of the mess he's gotten himself into, and ends up choosing him over Vincent Price at the end. That's a spoiler, but not a huge shock. The movie poster basically gives it away. And Vincent Price sets out to rescue Mitchum when he's being held captive towards the end. Does he do it with plenty of grandiose lines and proclamations of his own bravery? Yes, but he does it, and even gets wounded in the process. I loved the cinematography in this movie. There are the film noir hallmarks of dramatic shadows and lighting, extreme close-ups on sweaty faces to increase tension, Venetian blinds and louvered windows abound. All of this appears in spades. But I also appreciated the camera gliding through the sets, especially in the first scene once we're at the resort. We follow Mitchum as he saunters through, meeting and greeting people, and it so simply shows us the layout of the resort, and also shows off this massive set to great effect. The resort set is amazing, and almost the entire movie plays out there. There are all the bungalows, walkways, the restaurant and pool area, and it's all pretty convincing thanks to some nice composite shots. But then later, the style changes somewhat, and even though I do have issues with the whole finale, some of the camera work is excellent and seems ahead of its time. There is fight choreography on the boat that this all takes place on that is incredible. The camera is handheld during a chase through the corridors of the boat, and the way they shoot the fight between Mitchum and some sailors is wonderful. The editing and shot choice reminded me of something like On Her Majesty's Secret Service. We're cutting in the middle of shots, the camera doesn't stop moving, on Her Majesty's Secret Service was ahead of its time as well. But this is 18 years before that, and almost has the feel of the shaky cam style that was taken to new heights by the Paul Greengrass Bourne films, and then copied and ruined subsequently by everyone else. Okay, I've listed everything that works about this movie, now let's talk about where things went wrong. This is an RKO film, and was produced during the era where Howard Hughes owned the studio, which I believe was from... 1948 to 1954 or thereabouts, Hughes was notorious for getting far too involved in the filmmaking process and spending inordinate sums of money on reshoots and re-editing, and this film is no exception. The director is credited as John Farrow, but it's hard to know how much of the film we have today can be credited to him. Farrow was a great director, making plenty of films with Ray Milland and Alan Ladd, including westerns with both of them, he directed the noir classic The Big Clock, and his next movie after this one was Hondo, starring John Wayne. So his directorial abilities are not in question. He was very skilled making mid to higher budgeted films. He thought his work on His Kind of Woman was done, and turned in a completed film. And then Howard Hughes took over, and what resulted is kind of a mess, but not an unwatchable one. There are still many good moments, and a lot of those stem from Vincent Price. Hughes apparently loved his character and wanted it expanded and requested that John Farrow do that. Farrow refused and quit. Hughes then basically forced Richard Fleischer to take over direction. The way he did this was by threatening to not release The Narrow Margin, another film noir that Fleischer had just finished production on. I'm very glad it got released, by the way. I think The Narrow Margin is amazing and is so tense and well-plotted. It was remade with Gene Hackman in 1990, 
And I have to admit, I like that one too. But anyway, Richard Fleischer took over, and with constant supervision from Howard Hughes, the film finally was completed after being in production for many months, and upon release, it flopped, unfortunately. The first problem is that Robert Mitchum and Jane Russell basically disappeared to allow for the Mark Cardigan character to mount an attack on the boat. Mitchum is unconscious or just not speaking for much of the last act, and Jane Russell is given the indignity of being locked in a closet the entire time. So when the most consistently entertaining characters in your movie are sidelined for the exciting finish, that's a problem. There is a lot more action in the last act than what preceded, and some of it, like I mentioned, is very well done. But some, including an extended gunfight between Vincent Price and some henchmen, goes on far too long. It slows down, some of the action is just clumsily staged and edited, especially on board the boat, and the amount of meddling shows. There's almost a pirate movie style battle on the upper deck which feels really out of place, and the supposed suspense scene of Mitchum about to be injected with a deadly drug is edited so sloppily that it drags out and doesn't amount to very much at all. There's also an evil plastic surgeon character, played by John Mylong, that Howard Hughes thought was just the cat's meow, and the way he's portrayed is strange. Early on, he's almost a comical character, with huge sunglasses always lurking around the pool and taking exaggeratedly suspicious glances at Robert Mitchum. But then later, he becomes this broadly nefarious character that we spend a lot of time with. Another thing I have to mention is the casting of the villain. In the original movie that John Farrell filmed, Lee Van Cleef played Nick Ferrero, and that would have been very interesting to watch, as this would have been quite a major role for him that early in his career, but Hughes didn't like him, and he was replaced with another professional heavy, Robert Wilkie. While those reshoots were happening, Hughes changed his mind after seeing Raymond Burr in a movie, and they started over with him in the role. Any of those previous versions would have been fascinating to see. If Warner Brothers ever does a huge deluxe edition release of this movie, they've got to include as much extra footage as they can find. I know, it's highly unlikely. But during the finale, there is a great action beat where Mitchum is firing his gun at the villain, blowing out window after window until finally hitting him. The shot through the shattered window of him standing there is really nice. There was a lot more blood pouring out of Raymond Burr than I expected, though, so I was surprised that that got by the censors. The tone is just all over the place, going from slapstick humor to dark and sadistic violence in the finale, and some people probably love the movie for that reason, because it's so unusual. And I get that. I really enjoy it too, but I would have loved to see the John Farrow cut of this film. Would we be missing some fun Mark Cardigan moments? Absolutely. But I think a more balanced film would be more satisfying overall. Even if the ending battle was kept in, they should have at least included Robert Mitchum, because the movie suffers whenever he's missing from it. One last item, the title. I'm not crazy about it because it makes very little sense and seems like it would more suit a B-level screwball comedy from the 40s more than whatever this is. But maybe it needed an offbeat title like this. What else would they have called it? So, if you're a fan of this movie, I hope you don't think I'm being too hard on it. As I've said, I've seen it a couple of times and enjoyed it each time. It's just that last act that weakens it and makes it a tad overlong. And I don't blame Vincent Price. He's a great actor that makes his part so memorable and fun, but the character feels like what it ended up becoming. A comic relief side character blown up into something else at the last minute. If you haven't seen this one, I'd say check it out. It's definitely unique, and the behind-the-scenes drama makes it even more interesting. His Kind of Woman comes recommended. Thanks very much for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, please visit Hildebrand Productions for more. Adios for now.